We ran out of insulin, too. Uh, lost a secret for a time, and some of our patients who had been treated and were well died from lack of insulin. That was a hectic time, particularly for me, because I was supposed to make it again, and, uh, of course, we did rediscover how to do it, and uh, the secret can never be, be lost. Yeah. Uh, well, I think the new insulins are very good for those who only need weak insulin action, and they have the enormous advantage of acting by one injection a day. And obviously, if you have a thing that'll act a long time, it can't act terribly hard at any one moment. So when you get into severe diabetic states, I'm quite sure, Charlie, that back to your original one is what everybody does. Yes. For the routine living with insulin, a lot of these, um, one, a, one injection a day, are very good indeed and very welcomed, of course, by the patients. But um, for good, strong, hard action in any troubles, approaching comas or infections, back to the good old stuff you made first of all, too pure is alert in it to be a good thing, <laughs> as long as it's aseptic that. Yeah, we, we, we have to add back a pure impurity uh, now to make it uh, last a little, little longer. Uh, Dr. Best, uh, any other highlights? There must have been very many, but can you at the moment recall any particular well, I, so I've got a... Chaps on these ships coming over the... Yes, yes, yes sir. One time uh, during the war, I shared a cabin with uh, Adrian and Dale, and uh, the ship's medical officer came to us one night and asked whether we knew any biochemistry. We asked him why, and he said there was an unconscious boy, an American boy, down in the hold of the ship. Well, the boy had acetone on his breath. We thought he was in diabetic coma, but we had no insulin. Then we ran around the ship and found that the captain of the ship was a diabetic. So we borrowed some of his insulin and the boy recovered. And got along very well. You were sharing a cabin with Adrian and Dale. And, uh, and two, of the, two of the greatest... Physiologists. Let's call them physiologists. Lord there. Adrian Sir Henry Dale, yes. Uh, Dr. Best, is there any indication whatsoever uh, that you will ever be able to prevent diabetes? Prevention is really our, our ultimate Doesn't goal. Go. And uh, if we had an insulin to be given by mouth, I believe that the onset of diabetes could be postponed or prevented in, in certain types of cases. We've already done that in our animals by giving insulin prophylactically and preventing the onset of, of diabetes. But uh, if that, uh, it would facilitate it a great deal, I'm sure, if uh, insulin could be given by mouth. The, the, Clinicians don't like to make injections into children who are perhaps threatened with diabetes but don't actually have it. So that's never been thoroughly investigated as yet. I think the clinicians are right not to do that, but they certainly would if we had a preparation that could be given by mouth. So that your ultimate aim is prevention and there are leads to indicate that someday perhaps that may be possible. I believe there are. I had an aunt who had diabetes. Uh, she was a nurse. And uh, she died in diabetic coma in 1918, three years before three years. Uh, insulin came along. So I had a, a family interest in, in diabetes. There's nothing like that for stimulating. No, for pushing you on. Yeah. Fred Banting uh, watched a, a classmate of his, a good girl of 14, die of diabetes. I think he was stimulated to select diabetes as his research by that happening, too. Yes, one of his first loves at school, I think. Yes, this girl that, uh, of course, the children went very quickly. I mean, more quickly than uh, no people child. of your age. Oh, yes, no child lived a year after diagnosis of diabetes, no. before insulin. And today, these children... Well, they're growing up, marrying and reproducing, producing children of their own. One of the great disadvantages of insulin therapy is, of course, that you have to use syringes. What advances may we expect in insulin therapy in the foreseeable future? Well, when we were created, it was arranged that the insulin would be delivered into a vein. I've always wondered why it wasn't put in our food. But it's not a vitamin, it's, a, it's an internal secretion. And perhaps someday we can make a depot insulin that will be liberated from, say, under the skin in the same way that the 
Insulin is from the, the gland in non-diabetic people. Of course, the, uh, you have in mind the oral yes. insulin. Yes. Personally, I think there are some leads that may make it possible someday to uh, have a preparation which can be given by mouth. I don't know uh, what the clinicians would think of that. Is that a very important thing, do you think, Robin? Uh, oh, I think it would be a great blessing to thousands of diabetics needing insulin if they could eat it or not have to inject it. You are all very clever, but I think that's going to be quite a problem, you suggest, to make a yes. therapeutic insulin that will be sensitive to your own insulin requirements. But as I say, you've done more difficult things in the past. Go ahead and do it and then we'll eat your insulin. <laughs> so we'll, we'll eat your preparation and throw away our syringes, but we'll keep the syringes for I a long you, time. I think you better keep them for some time, yes. So that you'd regard uh, oral, the introduction of oral insulin as a tremendous advantage. I would indeed, that. yes. An unbelievable advance, almost. I say unbelievable, but I withdraw that word. It's a bit too strong, but not very much too strong, I think. No, but it's a, it's a great challenge, and that's the type yes. of thing. you get ahead with it. Thank you.